Hello guys, welcome here to another episode of Out of Turn 4. I'm Brian here, coming up on the show. We're going to recap Phoenix, we're going to talk the latest racing news, and we're going to have your race weekend picks for Atlanta, or as we like to call it here, Trash Atlanta, along with everybody else in the racing community. Um, but we begin with the racing recap. This is going to be kind of a quick episode because I'm actually... Um, recording very late. I want to get to bed because I got to work early. So um, forgive me for kind of rushing through, but here we go. Um, Sammy Smith, he um, gets his first NASCAR Xfinity Series career victory at Phoenix, of course. Um, did so late. Congratulations to Sammy, of course. Um, another Smith got in a little bit of uh, exchange with his old boss. <laughs> Uh, Kyle Busch and Chandler Smith got together late. Um, and unfortunately, it hurt both their chances of winning. And just unfortunate. But congratulations to Sammy. He's a young, talented driver and not a spoon fed little you know what like uh, a certain cup driver for Joe Gibbs Racing. But, you know, good to see Sammy Smith win. Um,. I thought he could have done so last year. He definitely looked like he had a shot a few times. And just glad to see it all come full circle for him at Phoenix. Um, William Byron. Well, this one was interesting because this is a race that was dominated by Kevin Harvick. And William Byron goes back-to-back -back getting his second victory of the season at Phoenix. His sixth career win. But a lot of the talk... It wasn't really talk until you saw the preview for Actions Detrimental, um, which of course is Denny Hamlin's podcast on Dale Jr.'s Dirty Mo Media. Um, Ross Chastain, Denny Hamlin, they collided late. Um, Hamlin basically sent Ross Chastain into the wall. And then um, Hamlin took it to his podcast. And said he did it on purpose. He said, if I'm going down, you're going down with me. Uh, you don't make those announcements on your own podcast. But what I will say is it's quite remarkable, really, how Denny Hamlin allows Ross Chastain to live so rent-free in his head. He's got, what, 40 plus more wins than Ross Chastain. He's been in more championship fours. He's done so much more in his career than Ross Chastain. But yet, somehow, he feels threatened by the, mel by the Melon Man. All he has to do is look at his resume and say, I'm bigger than this. And instead, he takes kind of the uh, Joe Gibbs rallying cry of, you hit me, I'll hit you back. Um, and, yeah, you know, the thing is, is Ross... I'm not going to sit here and deny that Ross has done wrong in the past. There's no doubt Ross Chastain in the past has been overly aggressive when he didn't need to be. And I'm, his, and I'm a fan of his, mind you. So if I can admit this as a fan, you know, and Ross can admit it as a driver, we know it. it's true. Um, but, you know... Ross has admitted so many times to his own faults. He knows he's not perfect. Um, he, you know, Hamlin did get payback at Pocono. Um, you would think a three-month off season would kind of cool things off. And then they had a little bit of a minor incident at the clash. A minor incident. In a non-points race, a race that absolutely nobody in their mothers should care about. 
And yet somehow, Denny Hamlin has to find a way to say, well, screw you, buddy. Um, you didn't do anything to me this week, but I'm going to do something to you here. Not only did he, you know, run him up into the wall, he slammed into the rear end of the car going down the back straight. He then pushed him into the corner. Um, to me, that's a little more than what Ross did. And I think, again, the only thing that comes to mind when I read that is just how rent-free Ross Chastain lives in Denny Hamlin's head. Plain and simple. I'll tell you one thing, though. And I'm going to take, you know, you could say I'm wearing rose-colored glasses right now. But why I think Denny's threatened, it all makes sense and it all comes down to one reason. We saw how close Ross Chastain was to a title last year. Okay, Ross could have, to me, easily won that title. Of course, it was Logano's race to lose. And Logano, by virtue of winning at Las Vegas, had a lot more to lose going into, um, you know, the last two races at Homestead and Martinsville. So, what, uh, that's what I feel costed Ross, because Ross brought a fantastic car, a guy who wasn't supposed to go this far, wasn't supposed to be as dominant as he was with the next-gen car, and he was easily, I mean, Joey was good, but let's face it, Chase and Chastain were the class of the field last year. If Ryan Blaney won a race, he would have been the class of the field last year too. But Chase and Ross were essentially the class of the field last year. And Ross, again, could have easily won the title. So to me, it comes down to, I think Denny Hamlin is threatened. I feel he I think he feels threatened because Ross Chastain is every bit as good of a driver as Denny Hamlin is. Every bit as talented as Denny Hamlin is. Okay. The difference of course Trackhouse Joe Gibbs but Trackhouse is getting better every year. So that's the big difference. Okay, I think Denny knows he's 42, and he's not going to be racing much longer, and he's got nothing to lose, but he has everything to gain going for a title. And seeing how close Ross was last year, and seeing just how strong Trackhouse not only finished last year, started last year, but are also starting this year versus Toyota, who has laid a giant goose egg, with exception to Tyler Reddick's incredible run at Phoenix to almost win the race. Denny's threatened. Denny's scared, whether he wants to admit it or not. Denny knows... Well, actually, what I will say is what I know and what I believe and what I know is Denny is threatened. Denny is scared of Ross Chastain. Okay. What I believe is Denny Hamlin will not win a title before Ross Chastain does. I'm willing to make that bold statement. I'm willing to take that to the bank and say that Ross Chastain will win a title if and when, or, you know, before Denny Hamlin, if and when 
that ever happens, which I don't ever see it happening. So, food for thought, that's my belief. I know there's going to be some Denny Hamlin fans that are going to absolutely disagree with me and hate this episode, but I'm giving you what I feel are, you know, brutal opinions or the cold hard facts. And Denny Hamlin is threatened, and frankly, I believe Denny Hamlin will not win a title before Ross Chastain does at this rate. On to the news, though. Now that I've gotten that off of my uh, back there, um, there was an update after we released the video of Chase Elliott's uh, timetable, and it's Good news, he'll be back in four to six more weeks. Um, But in the meantime, Josh Berry will continue his work driving the number nine on the ovals. While Jordan Taylor, um, who, by the way, is a um, a, uh, WeatherTech IMSA driver. I almost said Rolex 24 driver. He does run that race, but Jordan Taylor is a... Uh, IMSA driver, he will be driving the Coda race for Chase Elliott. Um, So those two will fill in, and it's good to see. I mean, Josh Berry did phenomenal this past weekend. He raced up to 10th, did a great job. And then, of course, um, we know Jordan Taylor's got a massive resume when it comes to road racing. Um, Of course, this is a new car for him, a new style of racing. So he's going to have to take some time to get used to it. But I feel that even though he's not used to the cup cars, even though this might not play in his favor, I feel, you know, the things that Chase Elliott can tell him. Chase Elliott's a road racer in and of himself, um, or in his own respect, rather. Um, but Jordan Taylor can bring a whole new level of insight to this number nine team. And frankly, to HMS in general. So it'll be interesting to see how that works out. Here's a guy that we had projections were going... And man, for a while last offseason, it sounded like it was a done deal... That Carson Hoshevar was going to run, at bare minimum, a part-time cup schedule. And now, we know, and mind you, I said he needs to go to Xfinity first. I joined with the fans that he needed to go to the NASCAR Xfinity Series first. And it's going to happen. Um, Carson Hoshevar will make his debut with Spire Motorsports at Dover um, and will run five other events this season for Spire Motorsports. Um, Yes, of course, Spire uh, truck team and a cup team, um, but now they will venture into the Xfinity Series with the number 77, and it's good for Hoshevar to get his feet wet. Um, he's been close in the truck series. Of course, not exactly driving for one of the better teams. So, oh, excuse me. I told you i got to try to make this show short. But I got so hung up on the Denny thing. But um, Carson Hoshevar, um, you know, needed some Xfinity seat time. I still believe they're doing the right thing, keeping him in trucks. Um, you know, and I think it's also good to get his, you know, resume built in the Xfinity series driving, you know, Dover and five other races. So they're doing the right thing and I'll give them credit for that. Um, so can't wait to see what Carson does in an Xfinity car. Maybe better, maybe worse. You never know. Um, hopefully better for the chances of him moving up. 
There will be a Chastain in the NASCAR Xfinity Series race this weekend at Atlanta, but it is not Ross. It is his brother, Chad Chastain. Chad Chastain will drive for DGM Racing at Atlanta in the number 91. It will be his NASCAR Xfinity Series debut. Of course, as many know, he started four truck races. Oh, man. Excuse me. He started four truck races with Nice Motorsports over the last few seasons. Um, and congratulations to Chad. Um, I'm not going to lie, when I read this, it was just a little bit of a head-scratcher to me because what has Chad done in the truck series? That's, I think, the biggest question right now. What has Chad done in a truck to deserve to get called up to the Xfinity Series. Now, I'm happy for him. You know, it's great to see, but I'm always going to have that question of what did he do? Um, but wish him the best. It'll be a beautiful uh, protect your melon scheme. So, can't wait to see that on track, and I hope he does better than 30th or 32nd like he's done in just about every truck start he's gotten with Nice. Um, also, another guy going to be in the field, but, um, or of course, he's probably going to have to make the field. That's what I meant to say, so we'll see what happens. Um, let's get on to the picks now. We start with the Truck Series at Trash Atlanta, and I'm going to go John Hunter Nemechek and Tricon Garage. I believe they will get their first victory of the season. Um, Xfinity Series at Atlanta. I'm going to pick Chandler Smith. He's been looking really good the last few weeks. Um, you know, very well could have won Vegas before Austin Hill took it away. Um, looked really good at Phoenix. And I'm telling you, he looks good in his first Xfinity season, um, driving that 16. And he had big shoes to fill. So, just, you know, remarkable job by Chandler Smith to open the season. I think it'll continue with a victory in Atlanta. Um, Cup Series in Atlanta. I'm going to pick Tyler Reddick. I think the Chevy streak ends. But I think it's going to end at the hands of Tyler Reddick. He's been so close this season as well. Um, just hasn't had the results to show for it. In his uh, debut season with 23-11. That's all we got. Thanks for watching, guys. Tune in to No Final Bell this week. Tune in to Sunday Morning Tinkle this Sunday. And I'll be back with you next Tuesday for another edition of Out of Turn 4. Until then, goodbye everyone.